So it's Fun Friday, and we're going to talk about a story. Before I get into that, I did want to go ahead and showcase a Bionicle thing in this video to hopefully keep you staying tuned, but I've also got a Bionicle thing to show off towards the end of this video as well, and I'm really excited for both. But the one I wanted to show here at the beginning is this Paraka foot right here, a custom dye job that I did to match pearl blue. A pretty fascinating, fun color from LEGO, and honestly, criminally underutilized. This is what the color looks like here. And yeah, I'm very happy with how it came out. So if you're interested in that, into the progress of what I am working on with that, stay tuned to the end of the video. And of course, if you like content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. But let's get into that story. So when I was younger, when my family was younger as well, my dad used to love to take each and every one of us, myself and my siblings, fishing. We, it was something that we sort of did as well, part of his favorite pastime, but of course to relate to him as well. And though I was never the biggest fisher, never the biggest hunter or anything like that, I did like going. For the most part, I liked to explore and still to this day love to explore. We went to a large conservation area somewhat near the house, still near to me to this day, and they had a lot of boats that people would use so oftentimes while he was out there fishing trying to catch the next big one right i would often search through these boats and just see what i could find lures and things and he loved it because well i mean it got me out of his ear if i was maybe a little talkative that day but also it meant that he was getting free lures out of it right i wasn't the one really fishing so i'm not going to be using them of course i did use this to collect my own little set of lures sure but anyway this story starts out as one of those however it was just me and my dad this time around as a sort of rite of passage growing up. My dad used to take each and every one of us to a lake farther away from the house than normal on a little bit of a camping trip. And it was my turn this time. Being the youngest kid, we ended up going to a lake that was pro roughly two hours away, give or take a lake called, well, we called Ladonia. I believe the lake's name is Vandalia Lake. It's here in Missouri and you may be familiar with it. However, maybe we chose the wrong time to go because it was Memorial Day weekend. And though the lake itself is is kind of out of the way. There is a community built around it, and thus there were a lot of people there on this three-day weekend. We did end up staying at the lake for two days, and it was kind of eventful on its own. I'll talk about that maybe in its own separate story, because today's story focuses on one event that happened on the last day we were there. Now, I'm not somebody who believes in the supernatural. I don't believe in ghosts, but this is kind of a ghost story in a way. Here's the thing. By the third day, we were kind of tired. Both, we weren't very productive at the lake. We weren't catching a lot of fish, to be honest. There were just so many people here. But also, we were kind of bored. All of these people were, well, my dad would say, scaring the fish away, right? And so we wanted to go somewhere else or maybe just go home. He figured we'd probably stop at a conservation area somewhat near the house before actually fully going home. And so we got in the car ready to take the drive to head on out. But instead of going all the way back home, we stopped at another lake nearby, one that was a lot more secluded, one in the middle of the woods that not a lot of people really knew a whole lot about. It had a Native American name as far as I've heard. We just called it Three Finger Lake because of the the way it was shaped and I don't know if that was the name of the actual lake or just something I dreamed up but we decided we were going to go ahead and camp here on the third day probably on the wrong spot let's be honest because although there was a boat ramp on the opposite side my dad decided to drive down a very steep hill and just park in the middle of the woods nobody else was there no one was probably supposed to be there but we were there and so we stayed this was a particularly weird day storms were blowing in all of the evening and into the night it was so unimaginably humid. I could not sleep. We had originally set up a little lay down pat in the back of the truck, in the bed of the truck, right? But it was A, steep, and that was always uncomfortable. And B, it was just so humid. My dad decided to stay in the bed of the truck, kind of looking up and peering through whatever stars he could see through the breaks in the clouds. But I decided I was going to go ahead and sleep in the cabin instead, the cab of the car, right? So I did. Sort of. I never really got to sleep. I laid there and rolled around. It was so uncomfortably humid. And if you tried to sleep, even indoors in humidity, let alone outside when it's far, far worse, I have respect for our ancestors. That's all I can say. It's difficult. It's really difficult. And I chalked up to this that I wasn't going to be sleeping this night. I'll just sleep on the ride home tomorrow. So I laid there rolling around in this truck, cautious not to, you know, disturb the stick shift and have us roll into the lake or anything. But as I lay there, I rolled onto my side and I saw something. 
Now, again, we rolled down this pretty steep hill, and so I thought, okay, I'm seeing like a park ranger or something checking out the area. Maybe he saw some tire tracks or something. But it was, what was weird about it was that the light that I saw was blue. And that was unusual. It was an intense blue, too. So I thought to myself, okay, this is weird. I'm a little scared. Of course, it's the middle of the night. I didn't hear any trucks pull up. I didn't see any lights up the hill over the crest. But again, we were down such a steep hill that I wouldn't have probably heard any of that stuff. And I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention to begin with. Probably halfway dozed off by this point. And so I sat there looking head down, you know, laying down as I was. And yeah, frightful, of course. But what was interesting is as I continued to lay there, I started to see motion in this light. It started moving towards us. So yeah, that's a little freaky. But it only got worse because I saw another light appear. Maybe 50 or 100 feet away off to the left. Off to the right, rather. And this is what bothered me. It was too far away to be another person, or the same person, obviously. But also, why? At the top of the hill, and starting to come down towards the lake. And then another one appeared. Obviously, by this point, I was pretty freaked out. Now again, I've always chalked this memory up to just dreaming you know I, i've been there before i've i've tried to sleep not been able to sleep i can remember remember the very first time i had a sleep over and being so nervous i couldn't sleep but i could lay there awake in a sort of like semi-conscious state and that's what i always thought this was too because sometimes when you're in that state you see things that aren't really there i remember watching the clock at that sleepover as it spun you know how the hours flew by but in this scenario, it was just always something that I thought, this doesn't make sense. And it continued to move towards us until eventually passing even the side to the window of the truck, maybe five feet away. And what was even weirder about this, too, is that this was like a collective light. It wasn't a light that was diffused normally, dispersed normally. It wasn't bright enough to be a lantern, but not dim enough to be unnoticeable, obviously. And I made a noise and, and went away. So my dad had been laying in the back of this truck the whole time, I assumed, asleep. And again, looking up at the stars. But I looked back there. It's too dark for me to see. So I tapped on the window. And he said, yeah. And said, I said, did you see anything? He's like, no. <laughs> All right. I mean, I get it. He's got walls over the bed of the truck. So like if he's laying down, he's not looking over the edges, he's not going to see it. These were relatively low, not to the ground low, but you know, if they were matching the window of the truck, maybe four feet off the ground, give or take, of course, perspective is all, uh, who knows, throw it out into the wind, right? But <laughs> I've just never been able to live past this because it is my ghost story. You know, it's a little more personal and I've heard ghost stories before, but I've never heard something quite like this one. I've, you know, we've all had those sort of quintessential stories, just like alien stories, when everybody somehow coincidentally has little green or gray men, you know, but they all look kind of the same. And ghost stories are kind of like that, too. I've heard the ball of energy kind of a, 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 a story before. But I've never seen it. And so to have seen something like this. But what do you say? What do you do? What do you expect? <laughs> I just chalk it up to a little silly thing that happened one time in my life when my brain wasn't fully shut off but i wasn't fully awake either and i leave it at that what's funny too is that this was actually a really eventful third day as we woke up the morning after again heading home we stopped by one more lake and that might be a story all in itself because it's not really a ghost story it's not really appropriate for this video but it was a really exciting story so maybe you can expect a follow-up to this one here in the future and of course as i mentioned if you like these types of stories the best you can do is to let me know that in the comments but even better still is to like and subscribe let me know your story specifically and i wanted to turn my focus back Back to Bionicle. So as you know with the Bar Magna Expansion Project, some of the characters that I am building, like Izrakoth up there in his yellow form, right, are taking some inspiration from dragon-like characters. In a lot that I bought semi-recently, I actually had something that came out of it that was not Bionicle, was not Lego at all. It was a weird Transformer set. And honestly, the quality wasn't like super great. It wasn't bad by any means, but it did have some really interesting pieces in it. Wings. And the wings were metallic blue. Well, obviously, this is a color that comes from Lego as well. So I wanted to go ahead and pair them. And they're actually a pretty good match. 
So I went ahead and worked through them in order to get them to fit onto axles for Binacle. And they do so pretty well. They're not perfect. They will rotate around if you let them because it's a clip that's connected to those. But look at the shape of those wings. They look fantastic. These are actually supposed to be a two-part wing, by the way. There's another piece of clips on the bottom. I didn't like the aesthetic of that second half. And I don't want the wings being absolutely enormous. But this is going to be an ice dragon like character he's not actually a dragon again this is a motif so he carries that motif on him but he is not himself a dragon this is for my bar magna expansion project so he is going to be a glatorian character from iconox or the ice tribe ice village whatever and i really like how this is coming out so far it's a custom torso but it's a fairly straightforward one so i think it works out well enough here and it will be eventually back capped with a life counter on it so so I haven't decided on what mask, what head shape I want to use yet for that character because turning him into a dragon is actually a more recent thought of mine. And I know that ice characters being paired with black had been a pretty common thing over the previous years, 2008. Obviously, we got Krika, uh, 2007, we got uh, Prydak, you know, both of which paired black as well, but oftentimes paired with red. And I thought pairing with metallic blue this time around was actually really interesting. So that's what I'm going for now, which is why I made these pieces. It's also why I am making a handful of pearl blue armor pieces as well. These aren't quite there yet. They do need some more time in the die that I am doing, but I mean, they don't look half bad. And that's really the video. So as I mentioned, if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because it does help the channel out more than you really know. And of course, you can click the notifications so you get notified when there are more videos like this. I pretty much upload daily. It's not really necessary to click it, but if you want to, I won't stop you. Of course, if you want to tell me your stories, your ghost stories, or your stories related to your Bionicle Mox or the Bar Magna Expansion Project, you can do so in the comments below, or we can take that conversation further over on Discord and check out the Instagram and Patreon if you want to help support the channel and get some perks. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.